just the view of it and then the emotion when you did see the puck um yeah uh shot five hole and uh, i didn't see it go and i thought it was in his pads the way he was moving uh so it took me a second to get there but obviously uh, uh, nice to see nice to see it when it was when i finally did see it in the net Val, could you talk about playing with Nathan McKinnon and Gabe Landeskog on the top line and what that does for your game? Oh, it's amazing. But it's actually like you have to prove it every game. You cannot be sleepy. No. So I really like it. Any questions for you guys? JT, you've uh, been sort of on a heater lately um, with your goal scoring. What, what's maybe just been the difference for you in these last few games? Uh, I think just sticking with it, um, shooting the puck a bit more, uh, more shots in the last few games than I had earlier in the playoffs, but um, not too focused on that, uh, especially tonight. Um, just trying to check the right way, play defensively the right way, and then the chances will come. JT, what was your view on the hit that knocked Kadri out of the game? Um, I didn't really see it. Uh, obviously, we uh, we hope Nas is okay. and. Um, such a big part of our team, all regular season playoffs in the locker room, um, vocal leader, uh, hardworking guy. Um, I thought a lot of guys did, did a good job to step up and get a win for him tonight. JT, Nate was just up there and he said that the key to a 6-0 and postseason on the road is to play connected and playing boring and gross, I think. Overall thoughts about that? I mean, do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's about defensive hockey first on the road, checking, um, being above pucks, making sure we're winning the lines. Uh, it's not fancy at all, um, but it's effective. Yeah, Val, on your goals, just what were you trying to do? Were you trying to pass on the first goal? And then just what was kind of your view of the second goal, how, how that all went up? Yeah, first, first one, I uh, tried to pass it, you know, and the second, just go on the net and, like, Good bounce for me. We talk about before the game on Smith, like he's not moving well, so try to shoot it fast as possible. JT, last game you guys had that five on three, the lengthy one in the first period. Today, the five minute advantage. I for you, what is it that's not clicking on the power play, and how are you guys able to overcome that to not let the momentum shift? I mean, I still think we're getting lots of chances. Those guys. Um, especially in that top unit, are so skilled. They're continuing to get good chances, lots of shots. Um, I don't want to speak for them, um, but we have so much trust in those guys to to get the job done. Um, doesn't matter the situation or if they're hot, cold, whatever. They're we trust those guys so much skill, and they're still getting chances. J JT, just want to ask you about the emotions of sitting in the box and seeing that save that Pavel made, and then seeing Bouchard hit the post, and then coming back and being able to get that winner. What what, what was it like for you those those two minutes? Uh, yeah, definitely a roller coaster. Um, not a good time to take a penalty. Um, unbelievable job by our penalty kill by Frankie. Uh, a little bit of luck off the post, um, but our penalty kill has been doing a good job of um, you know limiting their chances, and um, you know I can't think that unit enough and then yeah from from the lowest and in the box and and waiting and then able to to get one and that's the highs for sure hey jared i'll start about the end of the game what did you just think of your top guys defensive effort there especially miko at the at the very end i thought it was outstanding i mean even before miko like we had a couple huge blocks from val going out to the point and then lecking in on the on the shift before Miko got out there, or say, I think Miko was out there actually. He gets two huge blocks from their uh, on their point man, eating pucks from down low in an uncomfortable situation. Miko great second effort to get a couple of clears, and then makes a great read on the one he picks off for the empty net. Just committed to try to get the job done, and 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 some real good defensive hockey there. Um, trying to get through that situation. Stay for that. Coach, uh, just first, do you have an update on Nazem Kadri? And then what did you think of the hit? Yeah, he's out. He's out. He'll be out um, for, for the series, at least, if not longer. Um, I mean, the hit, it's the most dangerous play in hockey. I mean, it puts him in head first from behind, you know, eight feet off the boards. I'll leave it at that. 
not just bring that big goal, but like you said, with Kadri out, he's likely going to have to take a bigger role. Yeah, I mean, you lose a guy of Naz's stature and 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 in the role that he plays, he, someone has to step up, if not multiple guys. And I thought, uh, you know, JT, he's been playing some really good hockey lately, finding a way to get in the score sheet. I thought he did a nice job defensively. Um, obviously a huge goal a second effort on that play to win the battle and then take it to the net and still be able to put it behind smith i thought you know huge play at a very key time in the game right before conference goal uh frankie makes a big save on mcdavid on the power play your thoughts about that and also if you could touch on the six and oh now and on the road in the postseason yeah so i well first of all i thought frankie was outstanding you know the one you know he, the one that you don't want to see go in would be the tying goal right from distance off the rush um, but he more than made up for that uh, at points during the game at key key times to keep us playing with the lead first period they played and, and came real hard at us five on five and we were able to kind of weather that storm and a large part of that is Frankie um, you know he battles in there and he got us to win um, our team's confident on the road and home. Doesn't matter. We, we try to preach it regardless of the venue that we're playing in and what kind of environment we're playing in. It's still the same details and um, that we need. You got to be a little bit better on the road, obviously, because they're going to get some juice from the home crowd. We saw that in the first period tonight, but we were able to kind of get through that and um, continue to push and and. I liked our, our last 40 minutes and even some of the things we did in the first period. So good on our guys for like kind of uh, playing to our identity and continuing to, you know, do the right things and stay committed for 200 feet in order to get the job done. Jared, how does Val Nachushkin found the best version of himself and especially in all three zones, not just the offense today, but what he's able to do all around the ice for you? Uh, it's a long list of things for me, you know, like I talked this morning to, to probably a different group of reporters that, I mean, he's, he's such a good all around player with and without the puck that it's, it's hard to describe what he brings. It's, I mean, his ability to check pucks back, whether it's four check reloads, um, big long strong and fast it's hard to play against when you're committed and and uh, the way Val is and then he has the ability to play with high-end talent and make plays and finish things off he goes to the hard areas I mean he's just a lot to handle a guy his size and strength and ability um, you can see why he was drafted as high as he can as high as he was and um you know, we brought him in and his confidence was down and it's built up over the years and he's just such a huge part of our team. And I know that the, the things that he does don't go unnoticed in our locker room and with all the other guys, you know, they know how big of a part of the team that he is and, and the role he can play in our success. You, you talked about Frankie earlier. He gives up the goal early, doesn't get rattled. Is that is that just a guy playing with a ton of composure right now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of who Frankie is. I you know, touched on this the other day as well. He's just a guy that's like real even keel, uh, real, very humble, quiet competitor. It's just going to, you know, look past any success or any failures that he has and, and – keep trying to be the best he can be. I love that demeanor about him, especially in the role that he's in as a backup. And, uh, you know, he gets thrown into the limelight here with the injury to, to Kemp's and, and he just kind of keeps being himself. And, and I think that's what our guys love and respect about him. Jared, you, you talked about Naz earlier and, and it's hard to replace a guy that that's skillful, but you've also talked this year a lot about the depth and that's maybe going to be the difference, you know, towards winning a cup. How confident are you in guys stepping up if he's not able to come back? And, and not just JT, I know you mentioned him, but other guys. Yeah, like like I said, it's I mean, it's gonna have his his role will be filled by committee. I mean, that's how big of a player he is for us. It's uh could be one guy one night and a different guy the next. Um, I'm comfortable with it. Obviously, it's a huge loss, but um it's out of our control is what it is. So we got to move on and, and next man up mentality. And we've been doing that all year with our, some of our injuries to our key guys and key guys missing time. And, um, the, but the depth that, that we, 
you know, Joe acquired at the deadline is certainly going to be a huge piece. It was nice to have Sturm in the lineup tonight with that injury coming. It was um, have another centerman in there that can, you know, fill some minutes and, and do a nice job on the defensive side of things. So we'll have to rethink things, see where our health is at with all of our guys, and then pick a lineup that we think can get the job done here against the Oilers in, in, in game four. Yeah, Jared, what maybe wasn't going well at five on five in the first period? I think you only had one shot. And then how did that kind of shift as the game went on? Well, they they played hard. I mean, so did we, but we didn't come up with enough loose pucks, I think, is a you know, we talk all the time about winning races and winning battles. And, and sometimes that's not from lack of effort, but just positioning and finding room to maneuver through the neutral zone so you can get onto pucks in the offensive zone if you have to chip them. Um, sometimes it's just making sure your second man's there quick enough and outnumbering them in, in battles or races. And, um, but give the Oilers credit. I mean, they had a really good first period and they were going to be on a push. You kind of knew that coming in here. They weren't going to roll over. Um, but we started to find it as the game went on and started to get into the interior of the ice for some scoring chances and, and make it more difficult on them. And, um, you know, I guess that resilience just paid off for us tonight. Last question, Zach and Buck. Can we just talk about, you know, being – your memories from 2020, you know, being in Edmonton and then being here, obviously, again now. Yeah, different environment. is <laughs> uh, the biggest one, you know, a lot of similarities, hotel to the rink. Um, felt like we spent six months here during that time. Wish it was a little bit longer. Uh, but, yeah, like, I mean, it's just such a different time now everyone's back in the building you see the passion that the, that Edmonton has for the team and rightly so uh, I think it, it's just a lot more fun this time around when you can come and, and the fans are part of it I mean they they are what makes the game for players coaches it's a you know there's obviously the the, the competitor in us that wants to be competing and, and close to the action but it's so much better when fans are, are involved and it doesn't matter what city you go to and, and none better than the western canada yep thank you